Hey, welcome to Sci-Fi Wire's Metal Crush. We are going to be talking to two of my favorite scum dogs, Postulus Maximus and the berserker Blothar of the murderous band Gwar. We also got Andy Black of Black Sail Bride, some metal news with revelations, and a metal movie flashback to 1986. This is Sci-Fi Wire's Metal Crush. You guys, I am here with one of my favorite bands, Guar. We've got Pustulus Maximus and the Berserker Lothar Boys. Thank you for joining me today. Hey, hey thanks for having us. What the hell else are we gonna do? It's true, it's quarantine. And I have to thank you also for sending over this delicious Guar Espresso Destructo by Grindcore Coffee Co. Mm. You like it, huh? I can feel the Guar energy coursing through my veins. And you know yeah. what? I like it. That's what that is, <laughs> Guar energy, sure. Blothar, I've noticed that you are all masked up like a great citizen of the Earth. How is quarantine going and how is Antarctica responding to COVID? Oh yeah, well, you know, I mean, I live in a blanket fort in a house made entirely out of toilet paper and Lysol can. This is in Sarasota, Florida. I, I, I swam here to sort of wait out the quarantine. Uh, just been busy playing Mario Kart. Uh, I'm a volunteer sea turtle nesting coordinator. Yeah, yeah, surprising. I know, I know. Yeah. Lothar, I I thought you guys were all just about slaying humans and drinking their blood. Sea well, turtle sea rest. turtles aren't humans. Sea turtles are superior to humans in every way. I had no idea you were such a philanthropist. Of course. And I had no idea you could swim. <laughs> Ever since you know 2020 happened, we really haven't had to do a whole lot to drive humanity insane. So it's been nice. To you know, take our foot off the gas for a little bit and just let this thing coast into oblivion. I guess thanks, Corona. Exactly. <laughs> Corona, what a lady. I know that you guys have been doing some live streams as well. Are you guys planning on doing any live stream concerts? Is that possible to do from Antarctica, Florida? I think so, as long as we can get that 5G up and running. We're going to perform a show and film it live and stream it. We do have plans for this. Uh, you know, somewhere around Halloween sometime, uh, this year, I think. We, I think uh, that shows an amazing amount of foresight because we're probably still going to be in quarantine then, so people oh, no. will be so excited. Well, you guys also just released a new Guar comic uh, back in February. Tell me about that. We love comic books over here. We've had Guar comics almost from the start. I mean, Guar really is a comic book band. It's a medium suits us. And uh, so we're very excited to have our story told that way. Pushless has said before, what is it that you like best about comic books? No, you don't have to put a lot of thought into it. You can just look at the pictures. You don't have to actually read. Because the comprehension part is fairly difficult, I mean, for a third grade uh, education like I've got. Uh, so that, that definitely helps out. You guys have been on a 30-year journey to take over the world. I'm 30. So am I a bastard child of one of the Guar members? <coughs> Almost certainly. <coughs> wow. I wouldn't look into that anymore. I think you should just stop right there. You guys are originally from a distant part of the universe. Are there any science fiction movies that you guys really relate to or really enjoy? I like Return of the Living Dead, personally. That's probably my number one favorite movie of all time. Yeah, it's great. I always love RoboCop. That's, that's, a, that's a great one. And, and it's a brilliant movie that basically foretells American life. RoboCop and Idiocracy, you put those two together, and they're basically America now in 2020. Poltergeist is a classic. Ruth Bader Ginsburg is in that movie. In Poltergeist? <laughs> is that true? She's the old man. <laughs> yeah, the true. The story of Pazuzu. <laughs> the Exorcist, too, right? That's a great one. Give me The Exorcist and Poltergeist and a bunch of episodes of Star Trek and I'm good. I'm a next generation fella myself. <laughs> Although, Deanna Troy does not like us in real life. Really? Oh, yeah, you guys Deanna have beef Troy. with Troy? Yeah, she, she body shamed <laughs> Sawborg Destructo at a comic book convention. No way. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. You know, that is something that I've never seen Guar do is body shame. Yeah, Guar is very body positive. Probably the only people more body positive than Guar are uh, you know, juggalos. Do you feel like there's a lot of crossover between juggalos and guar fans? More than we'd like. <laughs> <laughs> I think so. Juggalos are cool. Juggalos are cool. They're getting into politics a little bit more in a, in a way that I can get behind. Their hand has kind of been forced into politics with the government trying to recognize Juggalos as a gang, you know. We've talked to some of the head clowns over there over the years, you know, and they've had us at the gathering of the Juggalos and stuff, so they're not all bad. But we like to get behind Juggalos. 
Well, I have to shout this out. You guys are releasing a deluxe 30th anniversary box set of Scum Dogs, August 2020, which is remixed and remastered by producer Ronan Chris Murphy, as well as a cassette containing rehearsal demos and previously unreleased tracks. Holy shit. That sounds incredible. Um, what do I got to do to get my dirty little mitts on that? Well, uh, you got to go to our website, www.guar.net. And uh, you can purchase the box set there. And then uh, we do plan on releasing the record uh, without all the frivolous extras, you know, as like a standalone copy later on down the road. But it's really cool. You know, I sat around my little dungeon here and I found the original reels for the, uh, for the record. And I was trying to think about how can we release music without me actually having to participate musically with the band? And I thought, well, we, we would remix and remaster from these original reels. And there's so much stuff on there that people have never heard before. I mean, I even floored some of the original guys when they heard it. You know, they were just like, I don't even remember doing that. Well, because you were on drugs. That's why you don't remember. And you didn't <laughs> care about what you were doing. So, but we have this available for everyone to hear. Yeah, it sounds great. There's performances that people haven't heard. Uh, the whole packaging, everything about it is the way that we wanted this record to come out before it got royally screwed up by all the people that put it out so <laughs> at last you're gonna hear it and see it the way it was meant to be seen in her say i wanted to introduce my friend to guar and they had for some reason never even heard of you guys much less even heavy metal how would you guys describe guar in one sentence bloody rampage <laughs> bloody rampage. coupled with guitars yeah that's a, that's a, a brief one you know, I mean, Guar is a band from outer space who were banished to this mud ball crap hole of a planet. And once we got here, we figured out that the best way to make a living would just be to use our insane superpowers to become rock stars. And, you know, and also our, our limited intellectual capacity really suited the role. So uh, in the age of glam rockers, we looked around and said, we could probably do something that's at least that stupid. That was back in the 80s. And we just never quit, you know? So, you like that coffee? Mm -hmm. well, yeah. Well, you guys, you are so fun to talk to. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you for... You're not looking so good there. Yeah, what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no! It worked! <laughs> it did work. Oh, yeah. my God. Are you sacrificing me? Yeah, you like it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm so happy. One <laughs> of us. One of us. <laughs> one of us. It's a long game. Yeah, you probably should. Uh, yeah, awesome. Well, <laughs> she's done. She's dead now. All right. All right, Blothar. You want to Amazon Blothar. each other some uh, hamburgers? Yeah, man. Hamburgers cool. sound good to me. Hey, it's Whitney. I'm back from the dead. Right now, let's get into all the latest metal crossover sci-fi wire news with Revelation. <laughs> DC Comics has teamed up with Marilyn Manson for a very cool animated trailer for Dark Knight's death metal. The song Worship My Wreck off of Manson's 2015 release The Pale Emperor is heard as we see the Batman who laughs carrying a defeated Batman and also doing some serious shredding on an explorer style guitar by the way. Dark Knight's death metal is a new seven issue series by Scott Snyder and Greg Capullo and it is so weird. I love it. D. Snyder, Twisted Sister frontman and the writer-producer of the horror classic Strangeland, recently announced he's working on a remake of a cult classic from the 80s. He hasn't told us which one yet, but there are undoubtedly many great ones to choose from. Personally, I would like to see a remake of They Live. Maybe it's like a Snapchat filter instead of glasses, I don't know. Heidi Shepard from Butcher Babies took to Instagram recently to share a video from her security camera that may have captured evidence of a ghost. Heidi posted, it's official, we've got a ghost. Every night for the past several nights, I've been getting three or four motion detection notifications in my living room. This is what my cameras caught last night at 3.11 a.m. Something appears to get off of the ottoman and then jet past the camera. What do you think, guys? Who are you gonna call, Ghostbusters or somebody to fix that security camera? Super 7, the manufacturer of collectible toys who has worked with such major brands such as Star Wars, Master of the Universe, and Planet of the Apes, have announced their reaction figure of the demon from the cover of Venom's second album, Black Metal. It is so cute, and guess what? I got a little friend. 
It's King Diamond. You know, I usually take things out of the plastic. The packaging is so pretty. I don't know, I just kind of want to take them out of their plastic and make a kiss. And those are the revelations for this Metal Crush Monday. I am here with Andy Black from Black Frail Brides. I'm so, so excited because there is a new album out called Restitch These Wounds, and I can't wait to talk with Andy about it. Andy, welcome. You are sort of sitting at the perfect uh, intersection between horror and comics and music, so I'm so happy to have you on the show. Oh, thanks for having me. Let's go over We Stitch These Wounds and also the comic that you have out that you released last year. New record is kind of, it's it's almost like a half misnomer in the sense that it's a very old record. It's a 10 year old record that has been entirely redone and not just remastered, but re-recorded and kind of redone. The, the basis behind that, for anybody who's not familiar with my band, um, 10 years ago, we put out our first record. Like many bands, we didn't have any money and uh, our our success kind of outweighed our, our ability to make things at the time. So we had a record that charted really high in the Billboard charts, but was made on a shoestring budget in a jingle studio. All the vocals were done in a closet. We were only able to do it in the middle of the night because we could only arrange time to get the studio then. It sounds like a band's first record who doesn't have any money to make it. And we always wanted to revisit this record because it doesn't really sonically fit within the context of the rest of our album. So um, for the 10 year anniversary, we've been able to do a version of the record that we feel is like, you know, it's the director's cut, it's the version that we would have liked to have seen out there. And then comic book wise, The Ghost of Ohio is a graphic novel on Z2 Comics. It's a semi-autobiographical version of my life if I were a ghost in the 1920s in the town that I grew up in. So interesting to be speaking with you because um, like I mentioned, you are in the heavy metal music scene, you uh, have written comics. Why do you think fans of heavier music also tend to be into comics and horror as a genre. There's a there's kind of an iconography and, and a pageantry and kind of an artifice to the whole idea of both heavy metal and comic books. And I think that, you know, there's a there's a pretty easy through line between particularly like classic heavy metal bands like Iron Maiden, where the stories are very grand in nature and their songs, you can make an easy through line to kind of the more emotional side of uh, Marvel comics. Characters like the X-Men are these kind of tragically flawed characters and that's not dissimilar to how many people feel that grow up interested in alternative culture or alternative music and those types of things so to me there's always been a, a huge connectivity not even by virtue of how what the content is and more so just the ethics and the ideas behind it um I, it's also just for me there's an aesthetic thing when i was a little kid my interest in kiss and the misfits and bands like that essentially came through my interest in comic books. When I first saw Gene Simmons, I saw him as a guy who could have been walking around Gotham City. Which is your favorite Batman movie? I'm 29, so uh, the the era that was most important to me was obviously the first four films, particularly the first two films. I was born the year after the Batman 89. In 92, I was just barely old enough to understand the concepts of like what was happening. So Batman Returns, while I love it now, was not my Batman movie. Um, my Batman movie in theaters and had every poster, every bit of merchandise, dressed up every day. Admittedly, when I was a little kid, my first crush that I had at like five years old was Chase Meridian. I would kiss Nicole Kidman on the VHS box as a little kid, which is a very <laughs> embarrassing thing to say. Uh, but no, so Batman Forever was my movie. While it's not my favorite, um, that was the one that meant the most to me and I was the perfect age and it was it was my childhood in many ways so that to me evokes the most nostalgia my favorite Batman movie artistically it's Batman Returns for the score and the look obviously from a film perspective it would be the Dark Knight but I, you know I'm also a fan of the Dark Knight Rises I know a lot of people aren't I'm not a big fan of Batman Begins I know that that's like sacrilege and people talk about <laughs> how wonderful it is I'm a Batman in his prime doing Batman stuff kind of guy and I get a little tired of like the Batman at the beginning and Batman at the end of his career. And that's what I miss about the original four movies. The Nolan trilogy, we never really got prime Batman. We got Batman at the beginning, then we did an eight year time jump to Batman at the end, followed by Batman versus Superman, where Batman's old, followed by Justice League, where Batman is useless. So I'm excited to see whether the, the new series gives us a Batman in his prime. Well, we're talking about Batman a ton and we're talking about horror on this show and also certainly heavy music and what exists at all three of those is Dark Knight's death metal. The recent insane story from Scott Snyder, the story, it's cuckoo bananas is, is, is how I would describe it. Have you read That's it? That's amazing. 
I, I have, and it's it's amazing. And I'll just say this: I'm hoping to be involved in that in some capacity moving forward. That's all I can say. So I might, in some way, be involved in a small tangential way with that whole line coming. Out. As you said earlier, there's a huge kind of intersection of music and comics. Obviously, Greg Capullo is a huge metalhead, and that plays a big part into that series. And it's just really cool to see the art in there. You see Batman with a guitar. Like it's just cool. You know, it's something that as a little kid. I was doing and drawing and making up the idea that Batman was in a band. Let's get away from Batman for a moment, because I would love to know, besides Batman, what are your top three superheroes? Um, let's see, let's look around the room. I've got Spawn <laughs> over there in that section, so we'll go oh, with yeah. that. I love Daredevil. I always have my dog's name is Daredevil. I don't know, it's an impossible question. I, really, the top really one's is. always going to be Batman. My second favorite comic book series of all time, I've always loved Watchmen, and I'm, I'm in love with the television series. Uh, I love Doomsday Clock. I love the original. I've read it a million times. Um, I love, I watch the motion comic at least once a year. I watch the Zack Snyder movie a couple times a year. Um, so that, that, that series of characters has always been important to me. When I was younger, I was terrified of anything dark. And I think that the irony is I was obsessed with the misfits and Batman and all this dark iconography. Um, but I was also kind of scared of it. And I think that's what made me excited about horror films in the same capacity. Well, speaking of horror movies, are you a big fan? Do you have sort of a top three? Which ones do you like? I love the original Nightmare uh, on Elm Street, but I also like the, I like weird stuff. Like I like a lot of more recent like Blumhouse movies. Like I really liked the first Insidious. I really like the first Conjuring. I love the original Halloween. I love the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre for how bizarre it is. And because I grew up in Northern Kentucky area around like a lot of crazy woods and I grew up right on the river and uh, like right on the Appalachian Mountains. So I'm familiar with weird little huts and people that are in those little huts and shit. Whoa. And so, you know, driving home from school I, when I was a teenager, I would pass by things that look just like the places in Texas Chainsaw Massacre. So that really got my mind going. And, you know, th those things were inspirational to me in the sense of like, you could imagine what might be happening in there or those types of things. I am really excited to hear about this upcoming live stream that you have um, from the Whiskey A Go Go, an absolutely iconic venue in Los Angeles. Can you tell me about that? We were meant to go on tour starting in like the, the I think March 10th or something, and then w I would still be on tour right now uh, in Europe and Australia. Um, and so, when you lose that, your whole year of, of work and what you're going to be doing, and you also know that you've got this big anniversary record coming out, and you want to celebrate it somehow it can become kind of a, a, a difficult thing to think, well, what are we gonna do? And fortunately, very early on in the process um, of kind of figuring out how we could pivot, we were hit up by the Veeps company who is uh, facilitating this and they're the company that we're doing the stream through. And the conversation started of like, we could do a live stream. And then the suggestion came out that, you know, when 10 years ago, when we first did our, our first like big headline tour, uh, the club that we played in LA was the whiskey. And so why not do a show there on the 10th anniversary of the record's release, you know, make it this big event, play the record in its entirety for the first time. We've never played some of these songs ever. Um, and since we can't have a show with people there, let's do a stream that's, that's worldwide. I really love that. Andy, you've been such a delight. Thank you so much for talking with me today. Thanks for having me on. All right, it's time to fire up the flux capacitor and take a trip back to 1986 with this metal movie flashback. In the mid-80s, Hollywood had the brilliant idea to simultaneously cash in on the highly popular music genre of heavy metal and the blockbuster movie genre of horror. The result was the 1986 cult classic Trick or Treat. It's body time! This is the story of a bullied metalhead teen who takes revenge upon his classmates by bringing his favorite metal idol back from the dead. The cast includes Mark Price, best known as Michael J. Fox's friend Skippy from the sitcom Family Ties, Gene Simmons from KISS as a hard rock DJ, and Ozzy Osbourne as a preacher who is campaigning against the sinful music known as heavy metal. The character of rocker Sammy Kerr, who is resurrected from the dead by playing his albums backward, is played by ex-solid gold dancer Tony Fields. Tony also appeared in Michael Jackson's Beat It video. The movie soundtrack was composed by the band Fastway, which featured ex-motorhead guitarist Fast Eddie Clark. Thanks for joining us. Check us out online for more exclusive metal content. We are back next Monday with all new guests. See you then. And hail Satan!